-hmm. Now I heard that this mosquito also is a mosquito that bites you in the daytime. It's more likely to bite you in the day. It, early, early, early morning, early morning, early morning, and, late, morning and, late, and late. And at dusk. <laughs> Sorry, it's dawn, dawn and early. dusk. Yes. yes. So that's the time when you really should close up your windows and things like that. Yes. No, by that time they're already in your house. Yeah, not necessarily. Oh, they're already in your house. <laughs> yeah, they live a well, long man, so generally. And they, they, they harbor in places like under your chair, dark, your closet, dark, 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 dark cool places. So really and truly, if Zika is, if sorry, if AD is, is around, it's likely inside your house. Mm -hmm. And it's likely around your closet, in um, the bathroom, under your chairs and so on. Mm -hmm. and then becomes active around dust and dawn. Mm -hmm. it, uh, one of the things to note about it is that it's, it's a more difficult mosquito to catch. It's, it would be on your hand biting you and you lift your other hand to, to hit it and flies away quickly. I've as had a, some of those. Yeah, as, a, <laughs> Are you sure? as opposed to as opposed to the Culex mosquito which buzzes around your head in large numbers. Um, those they're generally smaller than ADs and those are easier to catch. ADs is, is like you, um, intelligent. Right. <laughs> and flies away quickly. Right. So um, that's one of the differences you could tell with, um, with ADs. As mm -hmm. well as ADs has this, the distinct stripes on its body. Um, black and, and grey, the, the grey stripes about its body, so that alone helps you to easily distinguish it from the other mosquitoes. Now, okay. Dr. Laws, where did this mosquito originate from? <laughs> the Aedes aegypti. Egypt? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a scientific name. Do you know where it originated from? Do, do we know? No. I, I don't think we, no. we're not well, sure. To be honest, we don't. Mm -hmm. Because there are different species yes. of uh, mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, Aedes is the genus and Egypt is the species. Is the species. Okay. Because we also have the Aedes tenorhynchus, which is over Frigate Bay, by Connery, the by the salt marshes. Yes. Yes. And that's a more aggressive one, mm -hmm. bite you in larger numbers, six and so on. Mm -hmm. It's black. And if it lands here and it's biting you and you move your hand, it, would, it might stay there a while, as opposed to Aedes aegypti, which as soon as you lift your other hand, it flies away. Some of them are like dogs, you know, they, their back is worse than their bite. Sometimes <laughs> you get some of them coming and they're buzzing in your ear. Okay. And, for yeah. me, and for me, that is, you know, it's annoying yeah. that you have these mosquitoes buzzing in your ear all night, you can't sleep, but they're not really biting. That, that's no, a, that's, that's how we tell, that's, yeah. that's how we tell the difference between the male and the female mosquito. Yeah, yeah, because the, male the female well. mosquito needs a blood meal mm -hmm. in order to lay her eggs, okay. but the male mosquito doesn't, so that's the one that's really bugging you. Oh, it's just buzzing, but it's not really no, biting. No. Oh, I see. So, okay. the female needs a blood meal, so they go and attack people. Mm. So we want to use this opportunity to, 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 to share with everyone, as individuals, we can make a difference in reducing the population of Aedes aegypti yes. mosquitoes. Um, you know, if you take five minutes, like twice a week, and just walk through your house, look for those containers where you have water stored, uh, in particular those where the lid is not tight, just make sure, check, get rid of if you suspect that it's a breeding site. Mm -hmm. The flower pots, the flower pot saucers, even the pet dishes, you know, for the cat and the dog, etc. You take them for granted. Uh, the refrigerator draining or drip pan, mm -hmm. um, dish old rack. tires, or the dish drainer the, the in dish the kitchen, rack. dish rack. Dish rack. Yes. You know, we, we, we may take them for these little uh, sites, potential breeding what sites. What about blocks and so on? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. No, you know, I have a situation at my home <laughs> where I get so many mosquitoes and I'm trying to find out where these mosquitoes are coming from. I look around my yard, I see if there's any water that is stored and so on, and I'm not seeing anything, but I'm getting an influx of mosquitoes. Two, two things. One, you could look at the outside, you could look at the inside. Mm -hmm. if, 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 well, um, I don't know the size of your house, but you might have three, four bathrooms and you don't use all at once. 
but, but, but not so many. <laughs> but just just to say that, um, even though we might take it for granted, the, the toilet tanks and those and the toilet bowl, if they're not covered okay. and used so. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. mosquito will be breeding in those. And oh. then you might not be aware of it. So when you go in your bathroom, you see a lot of mosquitoes and don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, even your trap, your trap in your sink, based on how often it's used, the water stays there, mosquito goes on there, lay the eggs, mm -hmm. and they do hatch down there. Okay. On the outside, as I said, the blocks. Now, if the block holes are not filled, they collect water. Because definitely you're going to throw some, some amount of mm -hmm. concrete in it. So when the water goes in there, it settles in there. Remember right. what I said, between seven to ten days, they have a they right. But I would like to say also, when persons who keep vases in their house with plants mm -hmm. with water, with water, that is also it, it, is, it, is, it is very important not just to throw away the water, but you have to you have to take the plant and wash the plant off itself because you find that the eggs the eggs will be laid on the stem or the trunk of the plant and then when you go back in you will fill the vase with water. Then based on the level of the water you have mosquito breeding. It's also important to wash the vase properly, rub your hand around it to get off all the eggs that the mosquito would have laid on the side of the vase. Mm. Okay, now is there any way, I know that in some countries I've heard that there are, you know, some sort of a genetic engineering that they're doing with mosquitoes. <laughs> um, is there any possibility of this, um, Mr. Lake? Gen gen genetically modified mosquitoes? Maybe, but the, um, I know of a company that wanted to um, basically um, carry out an experiment in the East and Caribbean but um, government and technocrats were weary of it because at the time the, the, the work that they're doing was fairly new and they didn't know what effect ill or otherwise those mosquitoes might have on the environment and so the governments at the time were weary of it. I think mm -hmm. Brazil was the first, I don't know if they're, they're yes. the only country in the region mm -hmm. to um, take up take up the offer from the com company and allow the, the use. In fact, I think, th yes, they did, and it had an effect in one of their states. They reduced the mosquito population, mm -hmm. the 80s population. So it has been effective? Yes, there, in one of their states, not throughout. Mm -hmm. well, um, I think the only other place in this region where it might have been tried is also in the Turks and Caicos yeah. island. I think mm -hmm. they signed on to it, so that would be another area. Right. So I, I don't think we're ready for it yet. Okay. It's, it's important to note that ADs lays her eggs on the side of the, the container. So like a vase, for instance, where the water meets the, the container, um, ADs lays her eggs there mm -hmm. around, right? And what would happen, you would have the container filled with water. She lays her eggs there at the time. Maybe water might evaporate or otherwise get out. And so the, the level drops and the eggs would stay there for a while. Mm -hmm. and People might pee, look into the vase, be unsuspecting about hey, these eggs and so on, and how, and how she lays her eggs. The yeah. eggs don't free float, they stay attached to the side of the container. Mm -hmm. And um, those eggs could last a year and a, a few months there without um, coming into contact with water. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they come into contact, they become active and you, you get mosquitoes. And that's one of the issues. Um, well, during dry periods you would have like a reduction in the, the mosquito population because Aedes might have laid her eggs wherever, in tires, in bottles, cups, in the wall, in holes in trees and so mm -hmm. on. And you, you feel good and you let your guard down and then we have a period of rain such as what we're going through now. And then the mosquito population booms on you and you're wondering where they are coming from, not realizing that Aedes would have laid the groundwork for this boom maybe I months see. ago, mm -hmm. because the eggs can last a year and three months or more mm -hmm. of desiccation. So just waiting for water. Yeah. Yes, essentially, yeah, yeah, a part of the, the survival tactic, mm -hmm. you know, and so persons need to be aware of that. Right. And um, when they clean out the vases, wipe it, as Mr. Wilder was saying, mm -hmm. wipe it to remove the eggs. Um, the eggs are e um, distinguishable, um, e they're easily seen. If, you, sure. if I were to show you them once, you would most likely be able to identify them going forward, but okay. most persons might not. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Walwyn, Dr. Brown, Walwyn Walwyn Brown um, what is the possibility of people dying from contracting the Zika virus? Um, as Dr. Law has mentioned, it's a relatively mild disease, um, 80% 
um, of the persons would not have symptoms. Mm -hmm. And when we say mild means that the symptoms are not very um, significant, meaning it can pass as if you were just having a bad day mm -hmm. or you just feel a little down when actually you might have had um, the virus. And from what I understand from the reports, it's not very, the fatality rate is not very high. Mm -hmm. I think there was only one report of a person um, dying and they thought it was directly linked to the Zika, but mm -hmm. um, I'm not too sure. I haven't heard of any other cases um, um, where it was directly as a result of the Zika. Sure. It was possible with persons with other underlying um, illnesses persons with a weak immune system, um, persons with complications from other diseases, of course, if you get another virus, that's going to put your body under strain, and so the chances of you having a fatal outcome is greater. Mm -hmm. But the majority of it is, is, is a relatively mild disease, so we don't have um, reports of many people dying as a direct result of it. So there's not going to be a crisis, for example, in the workplace, where people will have to be given time off of work or anything like that. I know the chicken gunya. I, I know there was a crisis even in Jamaica, yes, right? Doctor yes, laws yes. with the chicken gunya, yes. where so many people had to miss work and that sort of thing. Um, so the chicken gunya is basically, um, you know, it's a much stronger virus than the, the Zika. Yeah, the signs and the symptoms were more significant mm -hmm. than, you know, the signs and symptoms that we are seeing with Zika virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, however, uh, mm -hmm. persons who are infected with Zika virus and are experiencing the rash and the, the redness of the eyes, you, you still have to be very careful mm -hmm. and uh, try and prevent yourself being bitten by a mosquito and then uh, spread the disease to other persons and so uh, we, we don't we won't we wouldn't advise somebody who is experiencing the symptoms to go out to work or to go to school you know you should really remain at home uh, and protect yourself using mosquito repellent to prevent uh, human to mosquito to human spread mm -hmm. especially during the first seven days of your symptoms mm -hmm. uh, I also heard that it is spread uh, to sexual intercourse ah yes yes mm. yes the literature suggests that the virus can remain in the semen uh, for up to and even longer uh, than 62 days or about two months. Mm -hmm. And so that's so why... So what would you advise in that case, doctor? <laughs> well, uh, well, for one, we are advising that all pregnant females, all right, if you are not affected as yet by the Zika virus, you should use uh, protection. Uh, you know, during yes. sexual intercourse because you run the risk of uh, contracting the disease from your partner mm -hmm. if, you, if he or she mm -hmm. has, has, the, has the virus. Right. So and women are more at risk with this Zika virus. Is it fair to say that? Uh, Especially I, pregnant women. Yes, vulnerable. Pregnant. Yes, vulnerable. Vulnerable pregnant, pregnant women. females, they mm -hmm. are particularly vulnerable. Okay. I, I want to also add that uh, a small percentage of infected persons, meaning persons who have contracted Zika virus, you can develop a very rare condition called Guillain-Barre syndrome. Mm. Now that for me is, is of concern, all right, because Guillain-Barre syndrome is a, is a condition whereby you have inflammation of your peripheral nerves in your limbs, your, your upper limbs and your lower limbs. And uh, persons will go, then go on to develop uh, changes in sensation of, of the hands and feet, tingling, numbness, and even weakness of mm -hmm. the lower limbs. Uh, you, it can progress and you can uh, find yourself unable to stand and even walk. Right? Oh. And mm -hmm. I, I want to, 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 to say that if, if perchance you have Zika and you are experiencing any of these symptoms, tingling sensation, change in sensation uh, in your hands and lower limbs, any weakness, you need to, to go to the, uh, the hospital as soon as possible because early treatment 
early detection and treatment are very important for the prognosis and the outcome of such a patient. Now, uh, galleon barry syndrome, it can cause you to be somewhat paralyzed, unable to stand and walk. Mm -hmm. uh, it can cause you to have difficulty breathing. Uh, it can affect your autonomic nervous system, where your heart begins to, to beat too fast, etc. Such individuals may have to be admitted to the intensive care unit. Some have to go on the ventilator. Mm -hmm. all right? And a small percentage of such individuals can uh, can die and so I think uh, yes. you know that can be you know that's where the deaths come in mm -hmm. with with Zika virus mm -hmm. a very very small percentage right so the Zika virus can lead to other things other complications other including complications, Gillian, Gillian Barry, Barry and then that you know a small percentage of, of persons with Gillian Barry can eventually die as mm -hmm. a result of, of, of that complication. Okay. Uh, but generally speaking, overall, Gillian Barry syndrome is a rare condition. Uh, the, the global incidence is about one to four cases per hundred thousand of mm -hmm. a population. Mm -hmm. So it's quite rare. And then it's only a small percentage yes. of those uh, can, can, can die. Yeah. Okay. Now, in terms of the, we've had three diagnosed cases of Zika. In fact, I think that they were sent off to a lab, to Kafa, and they came back positive. For a long time, I think that the Federation was in a sort of a suspense. How it is that so many islands around us people are contracting Zika and nothing is really heard in St. Kitts and Nevis. Well we did hear that three persons were diagnosed positively for the Zika virus and then we did hear too that the US has issued a travel advisory warning people that they can become infected with the Zika virus if they travel to St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, since that three, the diagnosis of that three, have you seen many cases at the hospital of this? Do you have that on record to say, well, so many persons have been infected with the Zika virus? Um, to, to date, uh, we have uh, approximately 218 suspected cases of Zika virus. Mm -hmm. Suspected. Yes, suspected. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Based on their presentation uh, with the symptoms, mm -hmm. you know, low grade fever, rash, conjunctivitis, you know, joint and muscle pain. Mm -hmm. uh, so, based on their symptomatology, uh, we have approximately 218 suspected cases okay that is that, that is what uh, have been reported to yes. um, to, to, to what to, what have been reported yes, to, yes, government yes, to, yes, to, to government to government, to government facilities, facilities yes. because you earlier mentioned yes. that it can be asymptomatic yes, 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 and so there yes. are people who can have it and they yes. don't know that they have it something yes. like HIV yes, um, yes, yes and yes, so on yes. um, and how does that move from being suspected cases to confirm the cases? In, 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 in order for a case to be confirmed, uh, that individual would have gotten a test, uh, a blood or urine test, and then the sample sent off to the lab, and then uh, it's tested, uh, and then it would be laboratory. And if it's mm -hmm. positive, it would be laboratory confirmed mm -hmm. and so a case is is confirmed uh, through laboratory testing mm -hmm. yes okay um, uh, one of the things to it it was expected all along that we would have cases of Zika because it's it's near impossible to um, prevent it coming here for two main reasons one we have the vector Aedes aegypti and two travel Persons are traveling to and fro, to, to and fro right. throughout the hemisphere. Right? The region is small. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and and not just region, hemisphere. The hemisphere. I'm talking about from like, 
Brazil in sure, the south up sure. to the US sure. and every single country among those the, 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 that region that the hemisphere has the Zika virus and we have a lot of travel and Brazil has recorded like 1 million cases of Zika Brazil has also recorded 1 million 1.3 million cases of AD of dengue mm -hmm. and um, it's the Aedes aegypti mosquito primarily um, vectoring these diseases and unless we were going to seal off all the borders <laughs> and prevent travel then there's no way we were going to prevent Zika coming here right and Puerto it Rico shows how we're all interconnected we are yeah. Puerto Rico is mm. 200 miles away from us and Puerto Rico has like 14,000 cases and every other country around us had reported cases but one of the things for us is that um, we couldn't report cases unless we had um, persons um, showing up with the symptoms and then we get blood sample and send Number to CAFA. Yes. So we, we were in a state where we suspect that it's here, but we can't um, s report to GIS that right. we have it. Right. That would be a sort of irresponsible. Mm -hmm. um, as for the, the part about the CDC issuing the advisory, I think they have done that for every country because every country has it. Mm -hmm. Bahamas has it, Brazil has it, Colombia. So it, it was just a... Uh, a routine thing for them because they would also point out to I think the CDC issued some sort of alert for Puerto Rico for in for pregnant women in particular mm -hmm. because Puerto Rico has 14,000 cases so far mm -hmm. and Puerto Rico not far from us and they just it's like they need to let their people know what's going on and so they just did that and putting us on the advisory on the advisory list isn't anything really yeah big. it's a standard procedure yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't avoid it, and we couldn't avoid getting Zika here. What we can do is control the, the, the population of the ADs and um, look at persons who are presenting with the symptoms, the signs and symptoms, and um, who we get confirmed, mm -hmm. and um, look at where they live, look at their environment and the persons around them, and see how we can cut off the, the, the transmission as sure. best as possible. No, sure, Dr. Walwin. <laughs> I just wanted to stress what Dr. Law says. When you have the symptoms, you too must do what you can to prevent yourself from getting bitten. Mm -hmm. Because um, the main transmission, even though you mentioned um, the sexual means, um, the main transmission oh, yes. is the mosquito bite. Mm -hmm. And so you're reducing that chance of being bitten. Mm -hmm. You're actually helping your community. So even though you're sick, you can't just say, well, okay, I already have it and, you know, don't care. Right. You have to do what you can to prevent yourself within that time that you have the symptoms, avoid being bitten. And so how so can how can people prevent themselves from being bitten? Repellents, insect uh, repellents, yes, yes. and yes. insect what? repellents. The long clothing. Mm -hmm. Keep your, you know, the barrier methods in your house. You the know, nets. the screens. If you have nets, um, mm -hmm. those were pretty popular before. Mm -hmm. but I don't know how popular they are. <laughs> well, right. Right. Well, what about the environmental <laughs> health officers mm -hmm. in terms of fogging and all of that? Have you? Um. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The department is looking at all the aspects of control. There are three main control methods that we look at, basically. Um, we're trying to get people to first understand that, yes, we have the mosquito, we have to get rid of the mosquito. Now, um, our emphasis is basically on education and source reduction. Mm -hmm. I mean, when once we get the persons to understand the life cycle, the breeding sites and so forth of this mosquito, once we do what we have to do, we will eliminate those so we won't have any mosquitoes. Sure. But we do have the mosquito, no. We do sure. have the Zika, no. So we have to look at, hey, we have to look at the chemical control of these adult mosquitoes because to prevent this spread, we have to get rid of the adult mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. So we are looking as a ministry to implement our last method which is not the best but it, it is the method that will control the adult mosquito mm -hmm. we prefer to know that we do source reduction we will do whatever biological control that we can do mm -hmm. when you have mosquito breeding and you have water for a certain use right. but the overall thing is on source reduction but as i said we are we are in progress to set up our systems to deal with the adult mosquito which everybody is afraid sure. of. So hopefully in a, in a matter of days you should be hearing about our fogging schedule okay. and so forth. Sure. I know sometimes you speak about an ecosystem and everything in an ecosystem is somehow 
you know, connected. And when you take away one thing from the ecosystem, <laughs> the whole ecosystem is affected and all of this sort of a thing. But I am really wondering, do mosquitoes serve any purpose? You know, and why, why do we have mosquitoes? Can we have a world without mosquitoes? They create so much problems. I had, I had a, a lecturer in Trinidad who... I, uh, somebody in, the class, in, in our class, entomology, brought up a question similar to that, and um, Dr. Ayub Khan from UWE, and he told me, you know, he doesn't believe in eliminating the mosquito because the bats eat the mosquitoes and something else eat the bats, the, the mosquitoes and something eat the bats and something eat something else. Oh, and so if you take away all of that, you're going to affect something else. Right, it's like right. so really an ecosystem, so they do serve some purpose. But we yes, we don't know the, the usefulness of them other than to transmit diseases, right? Than to transmit diseases. Yeah. And, and it's nearly impossible to eliminate to eliminate the, the mosquito um, population. So, but as Mr. Wiley was saying, we, we, we focused on source reduction, and source reduction is about we, we, we removing the breeding sites of the mosquito. Mm -hmm. and one of the things I always tell people is um, persons think that um, fogging or taking a kind of big on a bop is the best thing, but here's what happens. You have your um, dish rack in your house, breeding mosquito. You mm -hmm. have a vase in your house, breeding mosquito. You have tires outside, breeding mosquito. You have the larvae. And what happens, you might leave your house at 8, um, let's say 7.30. That's why he pick up his kind of bop. He go in his first bedroom, spray the bop, he go in the next bedroom. And we know, but that's why he has a big house with like 10 mm -hmm. bedrooms, eh? Over Malin. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so, oh, so let's, yeah. <laughs> Les Roy empties the can of bop in his house at 7.30, spraying all the rooms, his two master bedrooms and everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and closes down the house, thinking that when he goes back home at 5, there should be, or there would, n would not be any mosquitoes, because ba he emptied this can of bacon and bop. And when he goes home, he finds that the house is still full of mosquitoes. Yes. Guess, but guess what happened? Les Roy focused on the adults which are flying and so the fogging or the bop, bop killed those ones but Les Roy didn't focus on the dish rack or the tires outside or the vase inside and so although he might have killed these adult mosquitoes he had new ones emerging mm -hmm. from the dish rack and so on over the, the hours. And, and you know you have raised a very good point because mm -hmm. I have been asking myself mm -hmm. Are these mosquitoes these days bop resistant? Ah, that's true. <laughs> that's, 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 yes, that's are they bop that's, resistant? That's true. Because that's sometimes true. you spray and you wonder, look as though these mosquitoes are really defiant. Mm -hmm. So there are two reasons yeah. why. Yeah. So there are two reasons yes. why you have a re, uh, an increase in the yes. number of adult mm -hmm. mosquitoes. Are they really bop resistant? Do you think so, Doctor? Yes. 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 Some mosquitoes Some are resistant, resistant to the chemical that we use. Some yeah. are resistant. Yes. 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 Yeah. One of the things we do, um, which I'm responsible for on the vector control, is we try to collect Aedes eggs. We make what we call OV traps. Um, it's, which are some little black containers or cups and we put some sticks in them. We had a type of paper we were using for them. Unfortunately, we were not able to get any more of the paper and the pa paper was mm -hmm. collecting a lot of the eggs. And throughout the course of our annual work in vector control, we should collect a number of these eggs from ADs and send them to CAFA for resistance yes. testing. Testing mm -hmm. for resistance to the chemical that we would oh. use for fogging because ADs is like many other um, organisms, adapts and so becomes resistant to the chemical that we use. And um, we, that, that would be part of our strategy because if Aedes is resistant to our um, fogging chemical, 